Remember in the last video when I said I was heading down the home stretch? I feel like I've kind of turned the corner and I'm going down the home stretch. The home stretch. Well, it turns out that the home stretch was a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be. It's always all the little details that end up taking the most time and this piece had plenty of them. But real quick, before we jump into it, I have a couple cool things coming up in the near future that I'm gonna talk more about at the end of the video. So stick around for that if you're interested, or skip all this boring woodworking stuff and go straight to that, or none of it if you want. Totally up to you. Okay, I ended the last video with the main structure built. So the first thing I started with after that was cutting the recess around the back to accept a back panel. And for this, I just used a rabbiting bit and then squared off the corners with a chisel. After that, I got started on the center drawer fronts. I glued up a panel of eight quarter white oak that spanned the height of both the drawers as I figured it would be easier to shape the curve with the panel in one piece. It was then time to actually start shaping the curve and I thought about asking Greg, my X-Carve CNC router, to do it. But I feel like lately he's been getting a little arrogant I think he thinks he's the only one doing any work around here. So I decided to do it myself, but I did ask Greg to cut the template so that I was sure that I had the curve just right. Once I had the curve drawn out, I used my router to start roughing out the shape along the length of the panel. And I just kept moving the router over little by little until I had the whole curve roughed out. It was a pretty tedious process but I just went step by step until it was done. Once I had the rough curve, I just went after it with my belt sander until it was nice and smooth. I could then cut the panel in half and start working on the drawer poles. part of this that I forgot to film was just trimming off that little bit of the edge so that it freed up a space where your fingers could fit in and actually use the pole. So with that, the drawer fronts were pretty much done and I could move on to making the cabinet doors. And this was a situation where I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I'm still not totally sure about it. But I decided to go with a real mid-century look for these, kind of like those old TV consoles. Our friends had one of those when I was a kid and I spent a lot of time in front of it so that image is burned into my memory. Anyway, I needed to make the decorative panels so I started with resawing some oak and gluing them up. that I just used some tape to clamp them and it worked like a charm. I was then ready to cut out the pattern so I swallowed my pride and I asked Greg if he could help me out. I was 
initially cutting a really kind of delicate pattern and about two thirds of the way through it totally blew apart on me. So I found a different pattern that was a little more substantial and I actually ended up liking it a lot more. I then could cut the walnut door frames, which were just simple mitered squares with a groove down the middle of each piece to accept that center decorative panel. thing to do before the glue up was to stain the plywood backer for the door panels since I didn't want to be able to see into the cabinet. I stained these to add a very subtle color difference to kind of accentuate the decorative panel and I also forgot to film the glue up for the doors so once again we will have to use our imaginations. Fred help us out please. So let's just pretend that the work is going very well. And the last step for the doors was to just route a small groove along the top edge to act as a door pole. With the door and drawer fronts now complete, I could then move on to making the drawer boxes, which I like to keep pretty simple. I'll just kind of let this part play out and then I'll talk about them on the other side. They're pretty easy to make, just a few rabbits and a groove all the way around and you end up with a really strong drawer with a nice clean side panel. So with those done, it's now time to install all the hinges and drawer slides and I'm actually still waiting for all that stuff to get here in the mail. So one good thing about having unsold furniture is being able to steal hardware from yourself. So I use Bloom soft clothes, hinges and slides, and they're a little tricky to install. I mean, check out these instructions. I'd actually probably say the main skill in using these is learning to read the brochure. But really, once you figure it out, the actual installation is pretty easy. It's just about having everything laid out as accurately as possible.
so at this point, I think I finally reached the actual home stretch and the final step was to build the base. This was just a simple box with mitered corners, not much to it. With the base done, I could finally get some finish on everything. And with that, all I had to do was put everything together and I had a finished piece of furniture. finally finished. Just had to get down the home stretch, right? All right, before we go, a couple things that I wanted to talk about real quick. First off, this is probably the last large piece of furniture that I'm gonna be making in this shop. In the next few weeks, I'm actually gonna be moving to a new, slightly larger shop about 30 minutes from here. And I'm gonna be moving into the same building as Jonathan Katz Moses, another awesome woodworker. And we're hoping to get some really cool stuff going out of this new spot. He actually made a video that explains it a lot more. So I'll put a link to that in the description. But this is gonna be a huge step for me that's both terrifying and exciting at the same time. So please keep your fingers crossed for me. So now with that being said, the next few weeks might be a little thin as far as getting videos out, but I'll see what I can do. I'm not a huge fan of shop furniture or shop projects, but there might be some opportunity for some of that type of stuff. All right, that is it for now. And that is a wrap on the Credenza build. I really hope you enjoyed this little series and hopefully you like the piece. Let me know what you think and as always, thank you for watching, it really means a lot to me. And of course, until next time, if you're looking to build some new furniture, I'm in defense of building yourself a big old modern credenza. Close enough. <laughs>